Hey guys, Drifter here. Welcome to Advanced Warfare In Depth. In today's episode, we're going to be reviewing the ASM-1 Speakeasy. This is an elite submachine gun, an elite variant, that is, and it's the one that most of you have been trying to get. It's probably the most popular one, and the gameplay that you're seeing right now is some very aggressive SMG gameplay from J-Hub. He's on my channel a lot. He helps me with a ton of videos. Uh, he sent in the gameplay, so I'd appreciate it if you'd hop by and check out his channel. It's linked there via annotation and in the description, because everything's a little bit better with a hub in it. But let's talk about the Speakeasy. Ever since Chaos X Silencer made his video about this. It's been a very, very popular SMG. And let's take a look at what makes it good. This one is mostly a rate of fire based weapons. A lot of the variants you review are damage based. This one's all about rate of fire. The regular ASM-1 shoots at 715 rounds per minute. Very close to 720. Misses it by a little bit because it's coded to shoot at 800 RPM. It rounds down. Well, you know, we've discussed that forever on this channel. The ASM-1 Speakeasy shoots at 900 rounds per minute and it's coded to shoot at 1,000. The the funny thing is the ASM-1 bursts at 1,000 RPM. The first eight rounds of any ASM-1 shoot at 1,000 RPM. So the initial burst fire on the Speakeasy is actually slower than its normal rate of fire, which I thought personally was just kind of funny because it's shooting so fast, it's actually shooting faster than its coded burst. But it is a very, very high fire rate submachine gun. I think the only one that shoots faster is the MP-11 Squeaker, but this one deals higher damage and has considerably less recoil. It's far easier to control and this 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 RPM buff just makes it an absolute damage hub. I mean bullet hose but one of the cool things that it has is it has a built-in extended mags attachment now you can put extended mags on a regular ASM one and you'll get 67 rounds just like this one but this one to make it kind of cool and because it's the speakeasy and we're referring to you know illegal alcohol establishments during prohibition where mobsters would use the Thompson submachine gun which this is based off of and they would have the big drum rounds you have a big fat drum mag which just makes the gun look a lot cooler it's a little aesthetic thing i particularly like it but you get a 67 round magazine which is extremely useful extremely dangerous so you can just do continuous suppressing fire at a very very high rate of fire unfortunately there are a few downsides to this uh, machine gun most notably is that it has lower damage the normal damage on an asm1 is 35 22 18 the speakeasy damage is 35 22 16. You'll notice that there is a decrease in damage there at the end of the range, and what that means is that a normal ASM-1 is 3 to 6 shots to kill, like most of the submachine guns in this game. The Speakeasy is going to kill between 3 and 7 shots, meaning that you might need an extra shot to kill at long ranges, and since it's an SMG, you can get to those long ranges pretty quickly. It's not overly hard, and especially if, you know, most people are used to, like, trying to map people with ASM-1, because it had such good range, right? I mean, and it was, you know, pretty accurate, so you're always trying to go all the way across the map and smack people well if you try that strategy with the asm1 you're going to have a bad time it just won't work quite as well thankfully the three shot kill range is unchanged the asm1 was never really about the super long shots anyway it was all about having the best three shot kill range for a submachine gun that remains completely unchanged on the speakeasy so you can still put advanced rifling on it and still three shot people but kill them faster of course because your gun is shooting faster and the four shot kill range though again is a little bit lesser we actually did get a range nerf along with a long range damage nerf the four shot kill range is about 30 percent less so the speakeasy here is really pushing you toward and really gearing you toward close quarters combat some of the other good things about it is that we have no penalties to either hip fire or accuracy so your hip fire is not wider or nerfed in any way some of the guns that have like really high fire rates have hip fire nerfs your accuracy is unchanged of course it's going to kick a little bit more because you're shooting faster but you know have you don't have any penalties to center spread uh, center speed or recoil or anything like that and there's no goofy attachment restrictions other than the fact of course the extended mags is integrated but that's something you want on this gun that's really kind of what makes this gun what it is so it's honestly not nerfed that hard i don't think the damage buff or damage nerf is is very significant and i still think that despite the long range damage decrease and the overall range decrease that this is still an extremely strong variant because it is very much so geared to close quarters combat if you rock this as a close quarters asm1 smg It'll, you'll love it. It'll work great for you. You won't have to worry about reloading hardly any because your magazine is huge, and I think you'll have a very good time with it. As for how
how I think it is best used, of course, up close and personal, in conjunction with personally looking at the stats, I would go with rapid fire and advanced rifling. J-Hub does not feel it's his gameplay that rapid fire was necessary, so he had the foregrip and advanced rifling. And if you want to run foregrip for extra accuracy since it shoots a little faster, that's perfectly fine. Advanced rifling adds extra three shot kill range, which is what you want. But I would probably go more like rapid fire, hip fire, just kind of crazy bananas with it. Again, it's your gun, you can do what you want. Definitely keep the advanced rifling. Rapid fire is more of if you're feeling it or not. That's all for this episode of In Depth. I hope that you enjoyed it and I hope you learned something useful. If you did, don't forget to like, favorite, and subscribe. All these episodes are recorded in beautiful 1080p 60 FPS, courtesy of my Elgato HD60, which you can learn more about in the description. The previous episode was on the BAL27 Obsidian Steed. You can click the box on the left, open it at any window. The next one is going to be a big, massive, crazy multi part episode on skill based matchmaking, so get ready for that. And as always, if you enjoyed, don't forget to subscribe. Drifter out.